with the strike of a light bulb. I just air it out and leave with the mic broke. The micro, I'm hard body like Tycho. Heavy metal Chevys with nitro. Addicted to the vapors of paper. Hypnotic to the thirst of pulling off criminal capers. I know the cocaine crackery stinks, but that's what it is. Surrounded by the khakis and mints. We move. What's up, people? We're back after a What's protract- up, people? What kind of intro is that? <laughs> Fine, you do it. No, I'm just saying that's such a weird thing. We've never done that before. I'm just saying but that's if, fine. That's that's mix it up. Look, if you if you want to be a little bitch about it, why don't you Swiggity Swiggity Shway, what's up, dudes? Is it, I mean, <laughs> come on. What are we doing here? This is developer commentary, and Tony's already starting to make fun of me, so I think this is not gonna be a good day. Say your name. Come on, let's do let's get through it. My name is Mike Stout. And I am Tony Garcia. And fuck you. And this is a totally bitchin' rad developer commentary because we're connecting with the youth of America, people. <laughs> All right. What's up? Come on. What, is that out of style now? I don't, I'm just... It's... We've done... How many episodes of these have, have we done now? Uh, like... Well, 18 like, RC3s like 30. and... Yeah. And we, and we started, like, every single one with just welcome to developer commentary. I thought it was a nice little pattern that we had gotten into. And then you had to just go and throw it all out the window to say to sound a little bit hipper and cooler. I don't know what was going through your head. <laughs> what's up, people? All right. So uh, what's up, people? We're in uh, Annihilation Nation, and uh, we're going to do some arena challenges, and then we're going to get get back on the critical path. And we're, we're hoping we'll be able to afford the, the rocket launcher. That would be nice to be able to afford that because you will keep making fun of you for using the grenade launcher. Well, that's true. I mean, when but, you should be using the rocket launcher. Uh, yeah, we just haven't had enough money to afford it. That's all. I, uh, I mean, the reason I'm using the grenade launcher is sometimes you need a uh, a, a crowd control weapon, and that's pretty according much all we to got. every com- YouTube comment. You sh- you're you're wrong for using the grenade launcher, grenade launcher as often as you are. And why is that, Tony? I don't know why. I, I think it's a totally fine weapon, but they're all just making fun of you. That you just, that's your go to weapon. I, I think it's probably a measure of how well we did at balancing this game that people want to use different weapons, you know? Because uh, in the user test, people just didn't want to switch weapons. What are you, why are you killing these guys? Uh, Come on, c- man. Because I, I have to use only the whip, and I only have two pieces of ammo left, and I, yeah. Oh, did you not refill your ammo? Uh, no, I did, but. I used a bunch of it. Like, the way you beat this challenge is by having them kill each other. And then, uh, you know, oh, finish really? the last guy off with the whip. Yeah. I just didn't want to interrupt whatever really important thing you were saying. This is hard, man. This seems like a hard thing for us to make you do. These whip guys have a really good... Uh, and you know what's funny? And we don't tell you that that's what you need to do either. We just sort of hope you understand. Yeah, but that's definitely how you balanced it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, not me. I didn't balance it that way. Come on. I mean, that was like Sean, I think. And All you designers look the same. <laughs> you know what? You are rollist, sir. They, I, I could have just gone further with that joke, but I stopped myself. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, I was going to turn it super offensive and then maybe it would get me fired <laughs> from my writing job, but no. <laughs> you were going to make fun of some celebrity? Yeah, maybe maybe a couple. You're a bad person, Tony. I didn't do it, though. I thought about it and didn't do it. Oh, okay, so you're a good person. I am a good person. I realize there are consequences to the things that I say. Which is what, Which is why we have rule number one. That's why we have rule number one. Don't talk shit. That's right. You look. We have a lot of new uh, new viewers. We can't assume that they've seen everything. I think a lot of people don't realize. Uh, let's talk about rule number one for a little bit. Okay. I think people don't realize how important rule number one really <laughs> is to us. Because you, when you're outside the game industry, you have this idea that it's like huge, and there's so many people, and there's so many studios, and like. You know, you can say whatever you want because it's a gigantic industry and you can operate in your own little world. That's not how it works at all, ever. Oh, no way. It is the most tiny industry imaginable, Ugh. considering how much money passes through it. 
it's actually really, really small. And the number of people that, like, matter in the industry is even smaller. Yeah, and so, so making fun of them is a good way to just never get another job. Right, exactly. And I don't think there's not like a – there's no formal blacklisting as far as I know from anybody. But at the same time, if you went to apply for a job and some other guy that you used to work with works there, which is incredibly likely. Yeah. Because there's, there's not a lot of studios that are worth going to and you know getting a job for. And most of the way that you get jobs is by having people recommend you. Right. So you, let's say I was to apply at Valve, and one of the many people I've worked with over the course of my career says, oh, no, this guy is a total piece of shit, asshole. Uh, that's not hiring. I'm not working at Valve. I mean, that's pretty much the way that's going to go. Yeah, but, I mean, really, are you working at Valve? I don't know. I mean, you're, t- you're, you're good. No, I'm probably you. never going to work at Valve. I, the Valve is an example of oh. a place that people might like to work. Oh, okay. I get it. Uh... Yeah, and I mean, even if you don't want to work at the place, uh, and I'm not saying you don't. I'm just saying even if you don't want to work at a place, then... No, fuck Valve. Those guys. <laughs> overrated. What happened to rule number one? No, Valve is exception to rule number one. Because nobody likes Valve. Come on. <laughs> nobody likes those guys. No, only everybody. <laughs> well, only everybody. Well, but I... aside from everybody, nobody likes them. Okay, I would say that at least all of the people who like Blizzard like Valve. And that's not many people, right? Blizzard's no. pretty bad. No, their games don't do well at all. I think Diablo only sold, like, what, 20 million copies? Uh, I, I don't know. That's it's, barely anything. 20 it, million. It's going to help with my bonus next year, though. So that's There's good. at least 6 billion people on the planet. 20 million is not is barely any, is barely a fraction of that. <laughs> uh, did I ever tell you the story about when I was on a podcast uh, interview and someone asked me uh, to, to talk shit about someone else? No, what happened? So I was on uh, a podcast for Resistance One, and uh, and the guy said uh, it was me and Schneider, and the uh, the guy asking questions was like, so in your opinion, who is a bigger douchebag, Cliffy B or David <laughs> Jaffe, right? And I'm like, I'm not gonna answer that question. And that's Schne- a good question and not answer. And Schneider was neither am I. And the guy was like, why? I don't understand. And I'm like, because I might want to get a job with one of those guys someday. <laughs> when was this interview? This was, uh, when did Resistance 1 come out? It was like 2006? Yeah, around there. Maybe, I think it was 2007, actually. So this was as Gears of War was blowing up. Oh yeah, this is like right when Gears like of War came out. Like the worst possible time games. to make fun of Pippi B. <laughs> well, yeah. I industry mean, standpoint. Like when Epic is now becoming like a juggernaut of the industry. Exactly. Like, the, like they were already pretty huge. But Gears of War just took them to another level. Yeah, well, and that came out the same year as Resistance. And yeah, t- yeah, yeah. And totally ruined Resistance at the beginning, man. Uh, that game that game sold a lot eventually, but at the beginning, Gears of War ate its lunch. So yeah, I mean... That was yeah. probably why they asked the question, right? And I think Jaffe had just left... Uh, just hoping there was some latent like hostility towards Epic. Yeah, or something. I don't know. Uh, we were on an Xbox fan podcast promoting a Sony game, right? So it wasn't easy. Oh, I see. Although at the uh, at the, so the worst part was while we were doing the uh, uh, while we were doing the the podcast, there was a, a live web chat that was going on simultaneously, and uh, we were watching the live web chat, and these people were just <laughs> shitting all over us the whole time we were on it. They're like, "Oh, fucking Sony guys! Sony's so arrogant. Sony sucks. Fuck Sony!" Right? All that stuff, and uh, uh, like all the stuff they say about Activision now. And uh, uh, and so we're there, and we're just trying to do our best, but we're watching these people just unload on us. And uh, the nice thing was, as the interview went on, like we got to see people sort of change their minds, and they're like, you know what, fuck Sony, but these guys are awesome. <laughs> we turned them around. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, my uh, my wife Mary was watching the. She was in there, playing, you know, listening to them, <laughs> just totally trash me. So and, and she was in there defending me. So maybe that helped. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Timed round. Oh, crap. If we lose any of these timed rounds, then game over? I kind of wonder if that console fanboy stuff still exists. I'm so far removed from it these days that I don't even know if those people are still out there. Oh, they still are out there, man. I can't believe that they're still out there. I mean, there's not not so much for, like, uh, uh, you know, the Wii these days, but uh, Microsoft and Sony, I mean... Uh, th- there's a comic who says they're like the Crips and the Bloods of the nerd world. 
doesn't even make sense anymore. Like, what? How many studios out there are still out there that are only making games for one console? Uh, like, there's less and less studios out there that only make games for one console. Yeah, I mean, even Insomniac isn't doing it. Yeah, anymore. Insomniac is moving over to the 360. Well, they're making multi-platform, but yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, but yes, I mean, that's what I mean. That their games are going to come out on 360. They're not even having Sony as their publisher on the next game. It's EA. Yeah, yeah, EA partners. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand how that that those people still exist. It's in, very in difficult to to make a living on that these days. Yeah, I mean, I guess the um, no, I no, I was about to say the Heavenly Sword guys, but no, oh. they're they're doing the Devil May Cry thing now, and I'm pretty sure that's gonna be multi-platform. Yeah, I mean, in terms of independent developers that aren't owned by a, a you know by one of the platform holders, I don't think there are many anymore. I was gonna say Media Molecule, but they got bought up. Yeah, yeah. and uh, there's just not a lot of studios out there anymore that are you know supporting that that one console. There's honestly not that many studios out there anymore. I mean, there's every day they're closing down. Yeah, we do have that. We do have that thread. It's you know. Oh right, on the forums. The thread of sadness. Oh uh, yeah. Every, see, every time, uh, every time a studio closes or someone announces layoffs, Tony and I go and post this to one of our forums, and it, uh, you know, it's always just really sad because we almost always know people at these places, and if we don't, then we're just a couple degrees away. I mean, it started about a year ago. And, uh, yeah, it's already, like, a ten-page thread of just, like, people that get closed down. I mean, I hope it gets better. It's got to get better, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope it gets better. I mean, I mean, what else can we do? That's a real down note. I mean, we, we need to, like, make a dick joke now. I'm sorry. Now we're see. This is what happens when you start talking about industry stuff, man. It just, sometimes it gets a little down. It's a, it's a wild and wacky industry. But that also just points more towards the fact of what we were saying at the beginning. It's a very small industry, and it's getting smaller and smaller. Yeah, every day I hear people leaving for other industries, you know, going to make missiles or, uh, you know, user interfaces for cell phones. Uh, so, if you want to work in the games industry, don't talk shit about other people in the games industry. In, in conclusion, yeah. That is the number one rule. People ask, like, how do you get a job in the games industry? Don't be an asshole and don't talk shit about other people in the games industry. And you'll do fine. Yeah, I mean, not, not being an asshole is really important. To, that is number one. Whenever I, uh, whenever I interview for junior design candidates, I'm only looking for two things. And one of them is that you're not an asshole. And yeah. If you thought the other one was talent, that's not the right answer. <laughs> I think a lot of, I th well, let's, we're going to get into this now. This was also another request thing that people ask, ask us to talk about. That I think a lot of people in the industry, when looking for entry-level positions, all they want is that they, they can see that they can teach you things. Yeah. Like, they don't expect you to know what to do out of the gate. In fact, the more you think you know, that's just more things that they're going to beat out of you over the course <laughs> of, because you don't know. I'm telling you right now, if you've never made a game, you don't know how to make a game. That's just the way it is. I, so, I'm not disagreeing, man. <laughs> so as long as people can see you and feel like they can, that you're willing to learn and they can teach you something about making a game, like that's all they really care about. And a lot of that is not being arrogant and not being a dick. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, whether or not they like you is going to be a huge part of that, that, you know, whether or not you get an interview after the phone interview. I yeah. Mean, my phone interviews, the only reason I do them is to scan for people being assholes. So. Maybe they maybe they tell you about that one time they saw you on the interview and they were talking shit about you. <laughs> maybe. But you turned, them, you turned them around. You know, an, another thing like... Uh, uh, you know, since we're talking about you know junior designers and tests and you know or junior developers and stuff, uh, one time I got a test where I asked people to design a uh, a mini game, right? Design a mini game for this game what, with these parameters, right? And someone sent me Sudoku. Like that doesn't count as designing a <laughs> mini game. Like you just took a thing that existed and didn't change it at all, and then. I mean, you know, I'm not saying Sounds that's like not a value. Sounds like they'll do fine in the games industry. I'm, I'm not you saying that's me. not a valuable skill to have. I'm just saying don't do that on your test. That's all. Yeah. Uh, I, I got another, in the same batch of applicants, I got a guy who sent me uh, 
scissors, paper, rock. Like that's nice. that's the mini game, and I, and and uh, one of the things that he wrote about it was, uh, it gets harder every time you play, and I was like, well, how does it get harder? Does like does it only throw rock to start with? How do you do that? Like they didn't put any any information about. All he said was it would get harder. Yeah, yeah. They're just like, and then this gets harder, and you can't like you can't design a game that way. That's not you, you don't just say, hey, there's this other game that I just rip off and don't change any of the rules, and oh by the way, it gets harder. I think a lot of people think that like the key to being a game designer is to, like find out the format for the game design document, you know, and <laughs> then like r and then just write up sort of general things. But I mean, that's not what you do. You have to think of everything. Like uh, for for these enemies, we had to we had to ask for every single animation that they had. Some of them we had to beg for. So begging also a good skill to have. Also, yes, for sure. Tony, would you say that one of the one of the keys to your success on the Ratchet games was that you were friends with animators? Uh, it definitely helps. I mean, for sure. Like, being friends with people outside the department is a good way to uh, ensure to, cooperation. Yeah. To well, uh, you know, lessen your workload a little bit, right? It's just kind of like when you can sit down with them and have a conversation about what you want, as opposed to just blasting off that one email and sent, you know trying to describe oh we need an animation where he swings the whip uh you might get back an animation a whip swing animation that doesn't work yeah yeah right so you want to be able to sit down with them and just be like all right here's my limitations and here's what i need it to do and you know don't get super fancy with it just keep it kind of simple and you know it works out pretty well I have completed just, zero of these, so I'm going to try this one. We're just going to skip to Courtney Gears. Uh, we'll, we'll see if I can beat this one, and then maybe we'll go back. So much for buying that rocket launcher. Uh, I guess not, man. You know what? We could always just do some off-screen sewer crystal mining. Oh, boy. It's a good way. Well, it's a bad way to get, <laughs> to get some fast cash, you know? Not so fast. Moderately fast. Reasonably pseudo-fast. How about that? Yeah, that sounds good. That's probably part of the reason why we don't have it already. I mean, I think we priced it assuming that the user had had done it. You know, we, we were assuming that you do at least a little bit of mining in those levels. Yeah. 